Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will continue with fractals inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So this is what we have from the last time, it's a Sierpensky triangle. Today we will create what's called the V-shake fractals, which are kind of like those boxes and crosses like this one and the, the R1. We will have also one more which is kind of more complicated. And then we will jump to what's called the Koch snowflake, Koch curve, which is a very well-known kind of example of fractal. So this is the Koch snowflake and we also have the Koch anti-snowflake. So let's get started. I will start with my with our previous creation from history and if you haven't seen the previous tutorial just please go check it out because it includes some important details. I will put the link in the description. So this is what we have from the last time. I will show the selection pane, so select selection pane. And we have the three slide zooms which are taking snapshots of those three areas and repeat this over and over again. Now watch what happens if I just select the top one and I hide it. So instead of having the top uh, snapshot or, or just you know taking the snapshot of top part, it includes only the triangle which is on the background. And if you can see it kind of stops redrawing, so I will select anything, maybe this one, right click and select of size and position, whatever just to, to, sh to show this uh, pane and maybe I'll change anything, maybe the line to no line and it will keep updating until it will hit the bottom. So this is a different kind of fractal. It's no longer a Sierpensky triangle, but um, it's a uh, interesting result nevertheless. Okay, so this is the first one. Let's jump into creating what's called the V-shake fractals, which, is the, which are those boxes. Now, in order to create a V-shake fractals, what you do is you take a grid 3x3 three three and you fill some of those with colors. So maybe you choose this cross pattern or maybe this kind of like rotated cross pattern. So I will create a new PowerPoint presentation and inside this new PowerPoint presentation I will jump to design, slide, size and I will change this to some square ratio, so maybe 9 by 9 inches, just so it's divisible by 3 doesn't matter. Then I will insert a new rectangle, so insert shapes rectangle. Let's wait until this menu loads and draw it somewhere in the middle. Right click to select the size and position and set the size to be of course 3 by 3 inches and the position should be set to 3 inches from the top and 3 inches from the left. And for the fill maybe I will change a different kind of fill, maybe this violet one and the line should be no line. And then I will just duplicate this few more times. So I will hold control on my keyboard while dragging this shape so it creates a copy and I will do this four more times just so I create this kind of cross pattern. Okay so this would be our base. Now we want this to be duplicated for each you know each part of the cross so I will take the preview and just drag it from the left side over our slide. So I will create what's called a zoom view of the slide inside the very same slide which immediately results in you know infinite loop, maybe not infinite but uh, long enough just so we get this kind of fractal pattern. I will move this over the top and make sure the size is of course 3 by 3 inches as well, not 33 but only 3 inches. And I will position it properly like so and of course maybe I will just type in those values in there and duplicate it a few more times. So I will again hold the control key on my keyboard, drag it down there on the left, on the right, and on the bottom. And you can see that I have to probably try to reposition some of those, maybe put in the values manually using my keyboard, just so everything is proper aligned. Maybe this one, those should be more to the top as well. So no, this one should be more to the top, three inches only. Okay, and this one is somehow, I will show the selection pane, one of those rectangles seems to be a little bit off, so I will make sure it's not. Okay, now everything is perfectly aligned, at least I hope so. And you can easily tell just because it continues, it loops forever, just so at some point everything kind of disappears. I will select all the slide zooms, jump to the format and set the zoom border to be no, uh, no outline, just so it doesn't get in our way. And we have a perfectly nice fractal except we don't see anything. And we don't see anything just because it continues to loop at, in, uh, to the point that those pixels are, those squares are smaller to the, than the pixel, so it kind of blends together. So I will select all the slide zooms using the sh uh, control key on my keyboard and the selection pane, and I will just group those together. Then I will quickly hide those, I will insert a new slide, jump to the first slide, and then I will quickly show those, all those slide zooms. So it will just keep iterating, and at some point I will jump to the next slide, which causes PowerPoint to stop redrawing the first slide. 
like so and we have a nice looking v-check pattern in almost no time now if we want to maybe use this for anything you may not know how many iterations you will get the next time you open the file maybe you can just select all those slide zooms and copy those using just the copy function jump to the next slide and in here i will delete all the content which is there and paste this as an image so if i paste this as an image it will actually you know of course not do anything this will it will keep will still keep the same image not changing the number of iterations so that's that's an easy way how to keep what you have on the first slide because maybe next time you, ch you know, jump to the next slide you will get different number of iterations if you just copy this as an, as an image you will always get the same result if you open the file the next time so this is one variation of the v-shake pattern which is this this cross let's quickly try the arrow variation where we have those this like a uh, rotated cross by 45 degrees and i will actually not create a new powerpoint presentation but i will reuse this one so i will jump to the first slide I will hide all, hide all those slide zooms and just rearrange those rectangles to different positions, like so. I will probably change the color as well once, once I am done with the positioning. So I will select all of those, maybe change the color to some different one, just so we can see a different result. I don't know, maybe maybe this blue one should be fine. Actually, I don't like this blue one at all, but let's let's not spend too much time choosing the right color. Okay, gray one is fine. So we have the different arrangement. Now we have to do the same for the slide zooms. Otherwise, you will get the different stuff, which is which may be what you want, but I don't want this. So I will move all the slide zooms to new positions, like so. And you will see that while, when I'm moving those, it's kind of a mess just because it's taking snapshots of different places. But once everything is done, it should probably disappear like so so again i will hide all those slide zooms and then show those again and in the meantime of redrawing i will jump to the next slide like so right now maybe i'll create a new slide delete the content from this slide and copy those those parents so i'll select these slide zooms copy in the clipboard and for the new slide i'll select paste as an image as a picture and now i have a two different v-shake fractals done in microsoft powerpoint Okay, so those are those fractals. Let's try to create what's called the Koch Snowflake and Koch Anti Snowflake. Now, the way you create those this Koch Snowflake is you take a triangle, and for each side you will actually add one smaller triangle, and you will repeat this process over and over again until you will get this nice looking shape, which kind of resembles a snowflake. So let's jump into blank PowerPoint presentation. And we need this slide to be sized in a way that we can accommodate a triangle with all the sides being the same. So I will select slide size and I already know that I need to be 12 by 10.4 inches. This is from the last tutorial to accommodate the triangle and then I will select insert shapes and I will select what's called the isosceles triangle, which is this one. I'll draw it covering the full slide, right click and select, right -click and select the size and position. And make sure that the size is same 12 by 10.4 and the position should be 0 and 0 so everything looks great i will change the outline to a different color and of course fill to a different color and maybe i'll go with this one what we need to do is we need to duplicate the triangle over each side of the triangle so i will just grab this one the preview and drag it over our slide which will immediately create a zoom view or, and it will just try to take a snapshot of the slide over and over again now we need to have the certain size and that is the width you know the width should be the one third of the of the side so currently we have this set to 12 inches so we have to set the width to be of course four inches so width would, should be four inches and then i will rotate it by 60 degrees to the left side which is of course 300 degrees if, if we just set it 360 minus, minus 60 is 300 and just position it like so somewhere in the middle let's try to keep it in the middle and for the for the zoom view itself i will set the zoom border to be no outline copy it one more time to the right side and of course rotate it by 60 degrees but to the right side like so and you can see that some kind of shape starts appearing which is which is great we are almost getting the shape so I will copy it one more time, move it to the bottom and rotate it in a way to kind of, 
you know, match, match the size. Okay, this should be in the middle, so I can type in the exact number. The position from left side should be four inches. Okay, so we are getting some shape, but it's definitely not a serpent. Uh, sorry, not not a Koch snowflake, just because we have those repeating patterns here on the left, right, and bottom, but we are missing the repeating pattern on the on the top, left bottom, and right bottom. So what we can do is we can we can duplicate those shapes, those zoom views, three more times. So I'll duplicate it, holding my control key on the keyboard, rotate it by 60 degrees, and position it to be four inches from the left and zero inches from the top, and do this two more times. And I'm holding the sh shift key on my keyboard to snap to 45 or 30 degree increments, like so, and using arrow keys on my keyboard to position each shape precisely. Okay, so one more is missing. Let's cover this one. And you will see that we are getting some, you know, some glitches. That's because just because, you know, those elements, those zoom views are not aligned properly. So we can spend a little bit more time trying to make sure that everything is aligned as it should be. Which could be a little bit tricky because it's updating all the time. So sometimes it's hard to see which shape is a little bit off. But with a little bit more time, you can definitely get it to the right shape. So that's it. That's that's how you create a nice looking Koch snowflake inside Microsoft PowerPoint in almost no time. So once you are done, I will select the selection pane and select all the zoom views. I will group those together using the format group command. Maybe copy this into clipboard and paste this in the new slide. And you will notice, and I will paste this as the image. And of course, we are missing the middle part, which which was done with the actual triangle. So maybe I'll select everything one more time, including the triangle. Right click and select copy, or maybe this copy. And in here, I will select paste as an image. And you will notice that this time we don't actually need to stop PowerPoint from redrawing anything. And that's just because it's it's redrawing over and over again, but we are getting only smaller versions around the edges, which is perfectly fine. So this time we don't need to stop or tell PowerPoint to stop redrawing at certain iteration. We can just keep PowerPoint to, you know, iterate over and over again until it will hit those very small areas where those are subpixels, so they are not even visible. So that's perfectly fine. Although if you want, you can still try to hide those and show those only for a certain amount of time. So you'll see how the snowflake progresses like so. And then I will get a different kind of results. And I guess that's it. That's how you create uh, all kinds of different variations for fractals, including the Koch snowflake or the you know, V-shake uh, fractals. Now, once you are done with all those images, you can just select the image, select right click and select the uh, save as picture and just save it as a PNG file or JPEG file to your folder and maybe use it for something. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.